Thank you very much for coming this, uh, to this special event. I'm a founder of Tea Talks together with Professor Dennis Noble. Biochemistry Society and the Tea Talks are putting this together. Let's welcome the president of Biochemistry Society, Tiani Chang. Hi everybody, my name is Tiani and I'm the president of the Oxford University Biochemistry Society. It's our great pleasure to welcome here Professor Dennis Noble. And the theme of the lecture is whether organisms can direct and influence their own evolution. And now I would like to invite Professor Hagen Bailey to introduce Dennis. So every, everyone today is so specialized. I, I really see Dennis as the, the last uh, polymath. He's an emeritus professor in physiology. He's very well known for his pioneering work on the computer modeling of the heartbeat. And I think over the years, um, he's really become recognized as the originator of systems uh, biology based on um, these um, early studies. How did the approach that I favor, the integrative approach, become sidelined in the second half of the 20th century? And the answer to that, of course, is that we were all of us, I include myself because I started off in this camp, we were all attracted to an oversimplified view of the logic of living systems. The mantra we all use, from molecules to man, and notice that's a one-way process. And the problem is this can't be true. Molecules simply aren't alive. Life is a process not fully programmed at the molecular level, I think we are beginning to understand now that there are ways in which organisms can actually use stochasticity to generate function, and therefore evolution can be, to some extent, uh, directional. Thank you very much. Do you reject the gene as the only unit of selection, and can you describe how a multi-level selection can happen? How does selection work? It works through death and life. The process of dying isn't actually a function of genes. It's a function of the organism. So it seems to me to be blindingly obvious that selection, at the very least, must be occurring at the level of the organism. My quarrel with the standard theory is not that it is not working, it is that it's not all that is working. So I'm not arguing that what you are saying is wrong, I'm saying that it isn't the whole story. But it's very interesting to note that when you read the various editions of the Origin of Species carefully, there are many places in the Origin of Species where he accepts the inheritance of acquired characteristics. Darwin never quarreled with Lamarck about that question.